You were fighting Manny Pacquiao, and um, he himself has put another legend into retirement in Oscar De La Hoya. Do you see some sort of a dichotomy where you could be returning the favor to him and ending his career in the ring on August 21st? Um, for me, I feel like it was a lot of different variables for the Oscar De La Hoya fight, because that fight, if you look at two Oscar De La Hoya, I think he, after the weigh-in, he gained only like two pounds. He came in, he weighed in at 147, and came in a fight 149, trying some new nutrition thing, <laughs> which is crazy, because I don't know why we gained two pounds, and Pacquiao, you know, basically retirement beat him, but, um, you know, it, it has nothing to do with, you know, with, with De La Hoya or anything like that. I think it's just, you know, Manny Pacquiao's time. Mm -hmm. He's been in the game for a long time. You know, he made a lot of money, you know, career to find a legacy. He's an icon in the sport, you know, a legend in the sport. And I feel like it's my time. He's fought in Texas a lot. Did you, was he one of your favorite fighters growing up? Did you ever go watch a Pacquiao fight growing up? Um, He was not one of my favorite fighters, but I did like to watch him fight because he was always in a fight. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, with the Barreras and the Eric Moraleses and things like that. Like, he was always in a tough you know, brawl and grueling fight. So, you know, that was entertaining in itself, but, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't, it wasn't my cup of tea just to watch him fight and be like, oh, I want to imitate that style because, you know, he was just a warrior. Mm -hmm. Do you see any of your skills and strengths uh, picked from Pacquiao? Do you see any of his fighting game in your skill set? Um... No. Nah. No. Obviously, you're, di <laughs> nah. you're obviously you're different fighters. Now, with Manny, what do you think he does so well that might give you problems? Um, his explosiveness, but I think you know his willingness just to fight and how quick he is. And um, you know, for him, you know, it doesn't matter. You know how old he is. You know, he he still pulls the trigger. You know, he's not gun shot off. He's the guy that's gonna fight. He's the guy that's gonna bite down the fight. And um, he's one of the guys you just got to beat into submission. You recently said you were about 80% for the Danny Garcia fight. H how do you feel now? Do you feel as if you're 100% recovered? Oh yeah, I feel, I feel good, I feel great. Um, like I said before, you know, Manny Packer is a guy you got to beat into submission. So this is gonna be a fun, entertaining fight. and. Um, you know, if you don't go 12, you know, I'll be on, on that side of the of the coin. Are you ready to, uh, do you have plan B and plan C already planned out just in case plan A doesn't work? Um, definitely, but, you know, like they said, you know, the thing about plan B and plan C distracts from plan A. So, you know, I feel like my plan, plan A will work. And, um, you know, if it doesn't work, then I guess, you know, it's going to turn out to all out war. <laughs> this is a big coming out party for you. It's going to be your fourth pay-per-view in a row uh, against someone who brings in a very unique audience, worldwide audience, in Las Vegas under the bright lights. You've been a big draw at home, but this is Las Vegas. It's, yeah. a, it's a different different animal. What does all of that mean to you that this is really another big shining moment for you? Are you ready to capitalize the way you've imagined your entire life and career? Uh, definitely it's something that, you know, I watched as a kid. You know, I watched the Lennox Lewis versus Tyson and, you know, I, I, the Floyd Mayweather fights and just the huge fights were, you know, were just packed out and just the media frenzy and, you know, everybody's, you know, coming to see that fight, you know. So, you know, for me, I feel like, you know, it's basically, you know, with Floyd didn't pass the torch, it's basically with Manny Pacquiao, you know, passing the torch and, you know, I'm becoming that pay-per-view star and uh, becoming that guy in the sport that's, you know, basically going to lead the sport. Uh, you've, been, you've given credit to Al Heyman a lot for leading you into this path to put you in this position. How has all that materialized into where you are today? Because it the plan has been, the, the plan has been executed and this is your opportunity. To talk about that and just the trust that you've, uh, instilled in him? Um, for me, you know, that's, you know, for me, it's hard to trust people. So, you know, I don't really trust people. And I feel like, you know, just talking to him and things like that. Cause my dad talked to him first before I even did. And, um, 
you know, my whole thing was I was going to go with Bob because Bob, you know, basically was giving me a big signing bonus. <laughs> and uh, my dad was like, you know, talking to to Al, Mr. Heyman, and he was talking about, you know, basically life after boxing and, you know, making sure my finances in order and, you know, give myself a smooth sailing, you know, when I retire. And, um... I'm like 21, 22, so I'm like, why are you talking about retirement and, you know, and set me up for the future and stuff like that? Like, I'm trying to make some money right now. So, um, you know, and just listen to my dad. My dad was like, so you worry about right now. It's about, you know, later. You know, and I was just like, all right, whatever. You know, what did he say? If something go wrong, it's, like, it's on you. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, basically, you know, then, you know, I started talking to Miss Heyman all the time and, you know, he started telling me about the plans he had and, you know, how to set different things up and stuff like that and, you know, asking me how I want my career to go and, you know, I just asked him what did he suggest on different things and, you know, basically came up with a game plan is all, you know, basically coming into, you know, fruition, what it has come into fruition and it's getting better and greater now. Does it give you satisfaction that you have this opportunity and Terrence Crawford doesn't? Uh, nah. I mean, I wish the best for for Terrence Crawford. I mean, I don't hate on another athlete, especially a black athlete. I feel like it's enough people hating on us, so I got nothing but respect for Terrence Crawford. Absolutely. Well, the reason uh, I brought that up was because Pacquiao and Crawford were really close to actually happening, and uh you ended up getting the opportunity yeah um, pretty let's tell you anything bob said a lot of stuff so <laughs> well that's how you bob. announced the fight you blamed yeah. bob so <laughs> yeah i don't know bob tell you anything so i wouldn't take his, his word for anything have you reconsidered uh the previous statements i know you've given out purse percentages and stuff but you know obviously uh, that is the desired fight. What 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 is your recent? Uh, what's your updated stance on a on a Terence Crawford fight? Oh, that's something that we're not even thinking about right now. You know, the goal is Manny Pacquiao. The goal's been Manny Pacquiao for you know a couple months now. So you know, it's something that we're 100 percent focused on. We're not looking into the future because once you look into the future, you know, you're present. You know, you get distracted. So right now, it's Manny Pacquiao. Anybody got questions about other people, we'll talk about it after Manny Pacquiao. Well, Manny Pacquiao, he's trained by Freddie Roach, and he's obviously one of the greatest trainers of this generation. But you're also trained by Derek James, who's one of the top trainers of the generation as well. Talk about how Derek has helped you over the last 18 months post-accident and preparing you for physically for this big test. Um, he helped me just, you know, just being determined to, um, you know, being there, you know, with me, especially, you know, after my accident, just, you know, telling me if I'm trying to push it too fast in the gym, you'd be like, you know, slow down or, you know, you're trying to go too fast, you know, or, you know, you know, making sure that, you know, my reaction time was good, you know, when we hit the mitts and, you know, just watch me closely on the bag and stuff like that and just making sure that, you know, I was 100% on point, you know, before, you know, I made my return. So, you know, even my first foreign, you know, it was kind of weird, but, but you know, you know, he watched me closely and just made sure that, you know, I was doing everything well. And even when I got hit on the chin, you know, he was making sure that, you know, did I make any sudden movements or was I wobbled or anything like that. So, you know, once... He seen that, you know, I was pretty much back to normal. He was like, okay, we can go now. And lastly, for me, where do you see yourself after this fight? You've you've mentioned a lot of potential scenarios, perhaps 154, perhaps a unification fight. You've even thrown out Canelo. There's a lot of exciting opportunities for you. What is the one you desire the most? Man, I tell you the truth, I'm going on the beach with my daughters. I go to Jamaica, man, and just chill out with my kids. Cause this is the first training camp where I I have a training camp house, so a dietitian and stuff like that. So I'm dreading not being around my kids. Cause most training camps I'm around my kids 24/7, you know. So you know, for me, it just you know after this, I'm gonna spend time with my kids, not thinking about boxing for about 
two months and then, you know, pick back up in the best opportunity and the best fight, you know, I'm going to take. So you're creating a whole new environment and mindset for you for this fight. Is that what I understand? Uh, definitely. I'm definitely trying something new, see if it works. So we'll see. Well, best of luck to you, Earl. This is Thank a very you. exciting fight, a very exciting challenge you're taking on. And uh, kudos to you for, for making it happen. Thank you. Appreciate it.